still out there, but unarmed. We're just shamming, you know, standard death to America stuff. From True Lies to American Sniper, from 24 to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Western media is full of images of evil brown people who need to be wiped from the earth by noble righteous white men heroically fighting for freedom and justice. And sure, it's so commonplace by this point that maybe you don't even bat an eye at old-fashioned American Islamophobia in our media. Hello everybody and welcome back. Well, Anita Sarkeesian. Yes, what a fucking lady. Okay, even before I say hello to anybody, you know what I'm going to do. What the fuck, Anita? You're straight away into it with Islamophobia, right? Now, um, those films that you mentioned, right, happen to be very fitting of the the location set. Most of the location of the people, where the locations are, are brown. So, anyway, but nice you mentioned American Sniper. I'm pretty sure Samuel Jackson's in that. Yeah, so anyway, let's uh, see what Elsa Nita has to say. from afar like cowards and you dare to call us terrorists here my desert blossom give the chain have you ever considered joining a harem oh my god they found me i don't know how but they found me you have got to be kidding me right Okay, I take it all the references are the same films you used twice and referenced twice in there. I'll, I'll just leave that one. You picked on Cannonball Run. Really? Back to the Future? Really? You know, right, okay, let's let's start with Indiana, Indiana Jones, right? The very first one. Indiana Jones, the, do you know why that happened that way? I'm pretty sure he was suffering dysentery or something like that, or he had some kind of disease where he was he had some kind of sickness that he was throwing up and like shitting himself consistently. And I'm pretty sure, according to lore, he was supposed to have um, had an epic fight with this other gentleman there, and they shot him. Right? What are you trying to imply there? That's racism because he used a Western technique against the noble swordsman. No, it was the fact that he, what Harrison Ford wasn't well. And it was done that way for time constraints. And for the fact that he couldn't do the fight scene because he was unwell. Um, God, we could go into all these ones and just take you apart, but it'll take too long. So let's just <coughs> move on and see what other bullshit you've got to say. What? Back to the future? Even that beloved comedy classic takes a moment to toss in a few scary brown men to menace and terrorize our white heroes. Unfortunately, we can't hop in Doc Brown's DeLorean and undo all the harmful representations of Muslims, Arabs, and Middle Easterners that have haunted our stories since, well, basically since the Crusades. But we can try to make sure history doesn't keep repeating itself. Okay, okay, maybe that's not entirely fair. In some ways, things have changed. Once upon a time, non-white actors could hardly get any work in Hollywood at all. These days, shows like Homeland and movies like Executive Decision are providing some brown actors with ample opportunity to portray scary terrorists who get gunned down while screaming something absurd like, Death to America! 
It doesn't even matter if you're not actually of Middle Eastern descent. If you're vaguely brown, you can stick around to play bad guys. Oh, are you an artist, Mr. Thackett? No, uh, sir. I work for a little company called uh, Texan Oil. Uh, well, there is no oil here, Mr. Thackett. Uh, just uh, sand. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Then. Right, okay. Right, we're going to have to do this, right? Now, they are casting Antonio Banderas as Spanish, right? But he is a great actor, and he got that role simply because of the fact he's a great actor, not because of the fact he's slightly brown, or in fact he's got a I mean, he's, Me he's Spanish, Mexican. It's a, it doesn't matter where he's from. He is a fantastic, fantastic actor, and I love him in bits and pretty much everything he's ever done, right? Even because I have children, I've seen it. Spy Kids. He's still Antonio Banderas. Come on. Even those things, he's still Antonio Banderas, right? So, anyway, so you pick apart all these clips that you've put together, right? And it's basically any clips you could find of somebody who's vaguely brown, right? Playing a part that isn't inherently them, which is cultural appropriation, according to you, you fucking retard. But uh, then there's also the fact of um, all these films are set in locations where the population is probably slightly brown, so the so the sets of these films have provided jobs to the locals, and as an extras, yes, some of them have been portrayed as um, the villain, the bad guy, but it is fitting with the location and the theme of the film and the plot and the way it flows, and also as you know just by history, what was acceptable and you you show films from the eighties and the nineties and the two, early two thousands and two thousand eleven. In the past 10 years, things have changed an awful lot. The past three or four years, it's changed even more. So what was acceptable in the 80s is no longer acceptable now, by any reason. But that's still, you can't judge the entire history of a war, of, you can't judge the entire of today's modern society on the viewpoints of previous generations, because we are not the same. We don't think the same way. We don't act the same way. Why do you keep bringing it up? Well, anyway, let's continue. Sure, not every Middle Eastern character in films is a villain. In the 1921 box office smash The Sheik, the dashing hero gets the girl in the end. But the Arab world of the film is presented as exotic and dangerous, and The Sheik himself, the one good heroic Arab, is played by Italian-American heartthrob Rudolph Valentino. You see, since he's not really Arab, he's allowed to get the girl in the end. I can't believe I'm going to have to do this, right? What did I just say? You can't judge the views. Look, 19... Seriously. Back then... Oh my god, it was extremely racist back then. Everything was. And yes, you're probably right, it was only because he was a white guy. But then you cannot judge the entire of the modern world on films of a generation with an entirely radically different viewpoint. How fucking dare you? Oh. Alright. Let's continue. If you think this kind of racist coding to signify the difference between good Arabs and bad Arabs went away with the advent of Takis, think again. Have you ever noticed how in Disney's Aladdin, the good guy might as well be a tanned American surfer dude, but the bad guys look and sound a little more, uh, Arab? I think you'll find Jafar's the British accent. I think you will find that Jafar has a British accent there. Yes, and he's more British than anything else. And if he was actually Arab, he is quite effeminate with that. So he would probably be thrown off a building. Am I wrong there? I'm pretty sure I've seen Aladdin many times. I see I've got daughters, right? He is British, yes. And, and yes, yes, he's British. So let's, let's see where else you're going to go with this. You are late. Apologies, oh patient one. You have it then. I had to slit a few throats, but I got it. 
While Hollywood historically has sometimes given good Arab roles to non-Arab actors, it has also sometimes given not-so-good Arab and South Asian roles to white actors, too, denying brown people work and decent on-screen representations in one fell swoop. It's basically the world's worst Catch-22. For example, take Mr. Habib, the scheming Middle Eastern villain and father of the bride part two, who's played by Eugene Levy. The Habibs would like to buy the house, George. It's exactly what they've been looking for. We've looked here 18 years. I don't know if we can get everything. <laughs> Those aren't even real words he's saying to his wife. It's just vaguely Middle Eastern sounding gibberish. Don't think anybody actually cares. Don't think anybody gives a shit. I don't give a shit. Just saying. And the written equivalent of this is very common as well. Video games and TV shows constantly just toss up some squiggly text and try to pass it off as actual Arabic. Well, this one is Arabic, but it sure doesn't say what the Homeland producers wanted it to. At right, okay. Video games with the Arabic written and it's just something that looks... It's just people are not supposed to pay attention to it really it's not like it's actually written as a sign and there's a translation underneath it like it's a direction to go somewhere it's just a visual thing it looks it looks good it looks good and it looks fits with the, the location of the game but then again you know a lot about fucking games up don't you Anita yeah just because you're an asshole yeah go fuck yourself as insidious as it is to flatten entire cultures and populations into the land of squiggly writing, there's nothing so pervasive and damaging as Hollywood's tendency to constantly portray vaguely Middle Eastern people as generic terrorists. It's so common that on screen, brown skin has practically become synonymous with bad guys who have little or no character development beyond hating America and freedom fries. Hey retard! Yeah you, ya retard! Well, guess what? That just seems to be because everybody who recently has blown up something, or actually as far back as I can remember, to be quite honest, apart from in the 80s with like the IRA, UDA, all that stuff, um, since that time and since they all stopped doing that, the only people to blow stuff up have been people from that ethnic well, group. Regardless of what country they come from, that ep that ethnic group has been the ones blowing things up. Am I wrong? No, I'm not. Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> Thanks, Jack Bauer. What would we do without you? Not particularly fond of 24. It's not, I never got into it. I never really paid enough attention to it, to be honest, to comment on it. But again, see my previous comment. That seems to be what they're shouting right now. That's what seems to be shouting since as far back as I can remember. The 90s, easily. Again, see my previous comment. One of the biggest problems with this is that it erases the actual lives and cultures of Middle Eastern people and leads many Western viewers to lump all of them into the same group. So let's start by clarifying a few terms whose meaning has been obscured by media that paints the entire Middle East with the same broad, shallow, ignorant brush. Well, this should be fun. Let's see what kind of bullshit she's going to come away with now. First of all, we've done a lot of research on this, and as it turns out, words actually have meanings. Weird, right? Ha ha. Ha. You can't just lump Arabs and Muslims together because they're not the same thing. Arabs are a specific ethnic group, united by culture and language, and who primarily originate from Middle Eastern countries. Arab is not, repeat, not a racial category. Got it? You can be white, black, brown, and still be Arab. But not all people from the Middle East are Arab and vice versa, like, say, ethnic Persians in Iran. A Muslim is someone who practices Islam, a religion with over 1.7 billion members spanning a vast number of ethnic and cultural identities. The Muslim world actually comprises a multitude of groups that folks often forget, including Iranians, South Asians, North Africans, Indonesians, Black Americans. Islam is not confined to the Middle East, to olive-skinned people, or just people who speak Arabic. 
But despite the fact that Islam is a religion, not a race, it's vital for us to understand that Islamophobia is racism. Hey, retard. Yeah, you, you retard. If you've been paying... What the fuck? What the fuck? Did, what? You just... You actually shocked me so much you made me skip that forward a fucking second there. Jesus Christ. How retarded are you? Holy shit, you just said it is not a race, but... <sighs> right. attention this far, you might be asking yourself, if Islam isn't a race, then how can Islamophobia be racism? The answer lies in another ism, one many Westerners aren't particularly familiar with. That's Orientalism. Fuck. Off. Just fuck off. Fuck you, Anita, right? Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You've gone past logic, you've gone past reason, you've gone past everything. Fuck off, Oriental. Right, okay, listen, I've had enough of this bullshit. You are a fucking waste of time. As always, if you want to watch this whole piece of piss for yourself, I will leave a link in the description. Right. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. <sighs> if you liked this video, hit like. If you want to comment, leave a comment. And if you want to subscribe, please do so. Nah, fuck it, just subscribe anyway. I'm Alexander Kingsfallen and I'll see you in the next one.